What does it take to outperform today Pogachar at the Tour de France? In the world of professional cycling, achieving victory at the Tour de France is a monumental feat. Beating a dominant force like today Pogachar, who secured back-to-back -back victories in 2020 and 2021, is an even greater challenge. However, Jonas Vingegaard, a rising star from Team Jumbo Visma, managed to do just that in the 2022 Tour de France. The question then arises, what enabled Vingegaard to outshine Pogachar on the grand stage of Latour? Jumbo Visma's head of performance, Mathieu Haibor, sheds light on the key concepts and strategies that powered Vingegaard's impressive triumph. The foundational principles at the heart of Vingegaard's success were three fundamental principles, as revealed by Haibor. Consistency. The team prioritized Vingegaard's health and fitness, ensuring he remained consistently in top form. This emphasis on maintaining his physical well-being was so intense that they even trimmed his race calendar to prevent overexertion. Understanding the opponent, after analyzing data from the previous year's tour, including stages where Vingegaard managed to drop Pogachar, the team gained invaluable insights into their rivals' weaknesses and strengths. Training to strengths. Rather than trying to match Pogachar's punchy accelerations, Vingegaard's training plan focused on his own strengths. He excelled on long climbs, and the team concentrated on maximizing his endurance and climbing abilities. Balancing Act Training for a cycling race like the Tour de France is a delicate balancing act. It requires not only honing a rider's strengths, but also considering the competition's profile. For Vingegaard, the team had to strike a balance between explosiveness and endurance, ensuring he could outlast Pogachar on the demanding mountain ascents. Facing new challenges As Vingegaard sets his sights on the Vuelta a España, he confronts a new challenge in the form of Remco Evenepoel. While Pogachar and Evenepoel possess a similar short-duration kick, the Vuelta's route, with its top category climbs, may play more to Vingegaard's strengths. Nonetheless, it's a different battlefield, and the preparations are more uncertain due to the limited time between the Tour and the Vuelta. Data versus Legs while data analysis played a crucial role in understanding the strengths and weaknesses of opponents, Vingegaard's ultimate success depends on his performance on the road. Racing is about more than numbers. It's about the rider's physical and mental strength, especially in the high-stakes world of Grand Tours. Consistency as the cornerstone one. Notable difference in Vingegaard's approach was the consistency in his training. He raced fewer times before the Tour de France, which allowed for a more focused and consistent training regimen. This dedication to physical preparedness and injury prevention was vital in his remarkable 729 winning margin. The pursuit of the double Jonas Vingegaard's potential to win both the Tour de France and the Vuelta a España would place him in a select group of riders, with Chris Froome being the only one to have accomplished this feat since 1995. If Vingegaard can secure the double, it will not only be a historic moment for Jumbo Visma, but also a blueprint for future success in the world of grand tours. In the high stakes world of professional cycling, it's not just about the rider's physical abilities, but also about the meticulous planning, data analysis, and unwavering commitment to consistency that can lead to victories over the best in the sport. Jonas Vingegaard's journey to the top serves as a valuable lesson in what it takes to excel in the world of competitive cycling.